It's been a few weeks since I've given you an update on the progress of my swing rebuild. I know that I've been doing a few other things, but this video is going to be dedicated to showing you what I've been working on, talk about some of the pitfalls that I've had along the way. I've had to backtrack on a few roads. We're going to get into the whole thing today, so stick around. Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game, hopefully. I want to walk you through some of the things I've been drilling and some of the things I've been working on to build my swing. If you remember a few weeks ago, I talked about trying to build a swing that would last me a lifetime, that I didn't have to make a bunch of changes as I went along because I am going to be changing over the next several decades, hopefully, and I know that I'm going to lose muscle and strength and speed and flexibility, all of that athleticism eventually kind of tapers off as you get older. And I've got a lot of pains. I've got wrist pains. I've got knee pains. I know a lot of you guys out there have pains and that is one thing that I want to avoid. I don't want to get into something to where I'm going to have to quit golfing for two or three months at a time to let my body recuperate because I've been taxing it with the swing that I use. So if you remember a couple of the foundational blocks, and I'm just gonna warm up here as I talk, I'll kind of do that as we, we talk here. But uh, one of the big things that I wanted was something simple. I didn't want a bunch of swing thoughts flying around in my head. I did not want to have to get up and make a checklist and say, okay, have I got this, is that, I want it to be a really simple concept. That's one. The second one is, is that I did not want to rely on muscle and flexibility because as I said, those things are going to deteriorate as time goes on. And if you're reliant on muscles and when you're in your twenties or your thirties, you can muscle a golf ball. And that's what I did for a lot of my golfing life. You just muscle it and, and you can overcome a lot of things with your athleticism and your your flexibility and your strength and, and, and you can hide and mask a lot of those things. But over time, as you get older, those things tend to go away and they let you down. And then if you wake up one day and you don't have those traits, those qualities, what are you going to do? How are you going to play golf? All of a sudden, you, you, you need to come up with another, another way to get around the golf course. So I do not want to be reliant on those things. And then a third thing is just the repeatability. I need it to be something that when I stand over the golf ball, I know where it's going. I'm willing to give up a little bit of distance to get it. That's part of the reason that I have a new set of irons and that I've gotten a new driver, which that video will be coming very soon, by the way, I'm going to show you guys the new driver. Uh, so look for that video to be coming. But with my old clubs, I had more distance, but the distances that I hit each club were inconsistent and unreliable. And I had more of a two way, two way miss, which now I've got more of a one way miss. And that helps me get around the golf course and know a lot more about what's going to happen once I hit a golf shot. Now, once I get warmed up, I'm gonna show you guys some down the line and some face on views. I wanna give you some images of that because this is a swing that is still in progress. I'm, I'm still in the experimental, let's see how we're gonna dial this in type of phase. And I've had a couple of setbacks along the way. I've gone down some roads in trying to build this swing and, and found myself getting off task. I'm not always finding bad results. It's not always a case of that. What it ends up being is I start to realize, hey, yeah, you're hitting good shots, but you've kind of lost the point of this whole exercise. I found myself relying on muscle and flexibility, and I was hitting some really good golf shots, but that's, that's not keeping true to some of the components that I want to include in this swing. As I said, I may be able to do it now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, am I gonna be able to do the same thing? So I had to backtrack. I had to backtrack and come back to square one and start over again. Then each time that I try something, I have to ask myself, is this really simple? Do you have to use your brain and go through checklists 100,000 times over every shot? Is this reliant on muscle and flexibility and leverage 
and all of those things that are going to go away. And is this very repeatable? Is it consistent? Can you play with it? Checkpoint number one. One thing that I want to include is simplicity. I don't want to have a bunch of thoughts standing over the golf ball. How can I do that? I can tap into things that I already know how to do and make that the model or the basis for my swing. For instance, throwing a ball, golf ball, tennis ball, baseball, football, doesn't matter. It's a step and a throw. I don't have to think about that. I can do that now until I'm 80, maybe not throw it as fast or as far, but that step and throw is so simple. It's so simple. And honestly, if you don't have the coordination or the ability to simply pick up any ball, see a target, and step and throw, you're going to struggle with golf as well. You're going to struggle with it as well. So what am I doing here? I'm seeing my target. I'm holding the ball comfortably in my hand. I don't have a death grip on it. I'm not holding it like a baby bird. I'm somewhere in between. I'm just holding it. I'm not even thinking about grip pressure. I see a target. I know that I want the ball to fly straight toward that target, and I can almost imagine the speed of it in my mind. And then I just throw. Now, the step and throw just happens. The follow through just happens. This arm moving over to the side for counterbalance just happens. The hip turn, the chest squaring up, it all just happens. Now, my short game, if you've watched those videos on my pitching and my chipping, it's all based on trying to throw to a spot. So right there at that white dot, just throw into a spot. Why can't I extrapolate that? Why can't I take that same concept and apply it to longer shots, right? So this is what I've been experimenting with. So now I want to go, there's a red, there's a red one out there at 100 yards. And I'm just going to throw it to that spot. see how close this gets it's to the red dot some would say that the ball is disconnected and so you need to think about throwing the tool rather than the ball so I am still playing around with that concept it's not written in stone yet if I think about throwing the ball that way then the club just simply becomes an extension of my arm and this club head becomes an extension of my hand and so I just feel kind of like RoboCop. How many times am I going to make RoboCop references in these videos anyway? I think the club just becomes an extension and then I'm just going to throw it out to that spot. Now let's see how close this one gets. A little short on that one. Uh, but, you know, still the, the thought in my mind is the same. So I think the simple act of throwing is one thing that is guiding me in the correct direction. Now, the second component is to not rely on muscle and flexibility. What can you rely on instead of that? Well, I'm going to rely on momentum and gravity and, and sort of this rhythmic swing, right? So back and through, and I'm gonna use the momentum and the gravity that's already happening back here and then once it gets down near the bottom, I can apply a little bit more speed to it and I can help to speed it up a little bit. But I can't do it from the top because that requires muscle to pull and force from the top. So I'm going to let it change direction, come to the top and then change direction and transition. And then once it gets to a place where it's down here where it's manageable, I can apply a little bit of assistance to speed the club up a little bit. And then I just want to think about whoosh, out toward the target. So let's see if I set up normal now and I think about that, give it a little bit of a beat at the top, a little bit of a, an extra second to sort of transition. Yeah, little pause at the top. Man, that is just a game changer. When it comes to swing path and all that, I've had some trouble being on plane. When I get to the top, I would have this sort of 
where I would try and muscle it over and the club head gets off plane and I've got to throw angles at the bottom to try and get it to square up. Whereas if I just take a second at the top and just give it a beat and get ready for the throw, give it that little pause and then it starts to fall and then here, whoosh, I can throw. I can't throw from here, but I can throw from here. I don't know if this has made a difference in my swing plane. I haven't looked at it. I don't care about the video. I don't care what I look like. I don't care when I put my swing up if somebody can pick it apart and say, well, you're doing all these things wrong. All I care about is the result. Well, you can see the golf ball, you can see the screen, and hopefully, you're not gonna be able to see all of it, but hopefully you can see most of it. So, we're just gonna make a swing here. And there you go, little baby draw. I'm not making full swings yet, still warming up, but that's right down the middle. Baby draw with these clubs, what I've noticed so far is that I either hit it pretty straight with a little bit of a draw, or they draw a little heavier. Uh, the fade doesn't happen. There is the occasional block, but for the most part, it's pretty much a one-way miss. Yeah, another baby draw. Again, I have no idea. I have not looked at video down the line from this angle to pick apart my swing, to look at it, to see if I got the wobble at the top, that extra little beat at the top, that little pause, it really makes all the difference. That was a good one. That was super solid. Uh, just beautiful contact. My apologies that you've got to see all my crap over here that's normally not on screen, but anyway, it's a garage. Calm down, it's a garage. Anyway, I'll show you some of these for a face on. Uh, I don't know, again, you're probably not gonna be able to see the entire swing. I can, I can at least show you the, the basic motion. So in my setup, as I'm getting ready here, I'm just thinking about, okay, what spot on the ball do I wanna make contact with? Where's the start direction? Do I feel balanced? Do I feel like I can move and throw? Um, all of the, the sort of predictive things that Sean Clement talked about. I just think about that. And then I try to imagine out of the side of my peripheral vision in my imagination, I imagine that ball taking off and the club going through in the direction that I want it to go. And then from there, I just kind of take a beat and I'm thinking about a momentum-based gravity throw. That is smoked. <laughs> but it has to be relaxed. It has to be confident. I think a lot of golf instructors talk about confidence. And what is confidence, really? Confidence is something that you've worked on time and time again, and you know that the results are going to be X or Y. You just, you just know because you've drilled it. You've worked on it. And I think that there's a... There's a real confidence, and then I think there's a false confidence. False confidence means that you haven't really worked on it, and you're just showing up and you're just cocky. Yep, I'm going to make it work. It's me. I'm great. The real confidence is when you've done it, and you've proven it to yourself, and you can rely on it and trust it, and the anxiety goes away. That is the real confidence. So, you know, again, I'm just setting up and I really, I'm not trying to kill the club with my grip. I'm not trying to hold it like a baby bird. I'm just thinking about a nice toss and a relaxed throw in the right direction. Just like that. And again, I have no idea what this swing looks like to you here or from behind me. I've got zero clue and more importantly, I've got zero concern. I really don't give a damn what it looks like at this point because the further i go the more i train it the more relaxed it's going to become the more innate and simplified it's going to become and i won't have to worry about 
I think it will sort sort of start to take care of itself, I guess, for lack of a a better description. Ooh. One of the things that I sort of had to, well, not backtrack, but really I had to get a different perspective on was in the beginning I said I really wanted to focus on using my hands because I'll always be good with my hands. And that is very true. And I definitely use my hands in the golf swing. You have to. It's the only thing that attaches to the club. So I get it. I understand that I am using my hands and they are very skilled and they do make these minute changes and things during my swing, whether I'm aware of it or not. However, I do feel like I've had to kind of take the focus away from my hands and put it into my feet because my hands are so, the, the pain is, is in there. So I can't think about, you know, trying to manipulate things with my hands. I, I have to let them do their job in the background. So they're very important. They're very integral. And I am playing with my hands. But I can't be worried too much about what they're doing. I think more about my feet and my footwork. Think easiest swing in golf. Think flow motion. You know, think Zen golf. That sort of footwork that, that they use to, to make things so simple and so repeatable. And, and think about what they do with their feet. I'm not thinking about doing that with a bunch of muscle involved. I'm thinking about doing it with momentum and rhythm and shifting and all of that stuff. Now you say, well, what happens if you have a bad rhythm day? What happens if you, you get out of sync and you have a bad timing day? Those things happen. However, again, I think that that will be lessened if I go back to thinking about a throw. If I keep that in the, in the forefront of my mind, how many days am I gonna pick up this golf ball and not be able to throw it to that white dot on the screen. That takes rhythm, tempo, timing, synchronization. How many days am I not gonna be able to throw a ball at that white dot uh, and have some sort of synchronization? Uh, I would think that it would probably be few and far between. Boom, baby draw over and over. And over. Now, like I said, this is still a work in progress. I'm still having to experiment a little bit. I have had to backtrack. I found myself going down a path of, of pretty good ball striking and I had some speed and I thought, wow, this is fantastic. But then when I asked myself the questions, is it simple? Is it repeatable? Are you using muscle and flexibility? The third box, the last box, I was like, no, I'm absolutely using muscle and flexibility. And that made me say, let's, let's start over. That, I, that's part of the process. It doesn't bother me, it's fine. I know that I've learned something. I've just learned something. I, a failure is, is learning and that makes me smarter and makes me a better, a better golfer moving forward. So I'm really excited about the progress. I think now I have gotten much more uh, things on the right track. I think I've started down the correct path. It ticks all the boxes. I haven't had a bunch of pains flaring up. Now, one thing I'll be working on as I move forward is, am I throwing the club or am I throwing the ball? I think that that's still a little cloudy for me. I feel like I'm throwing the ball and the club is just an extension of my arm and the club head is an extension of my hand that helps me square the face up because I don't throw a ball like that. I don't throw a ball like that. I throw a ball like this. So for me, it's more about throwing the ball. And as I said, that kind of relates to my pitching technique where I'm just throwing the ball onto the green to a spot. The only difference is, is that my spot needs to be about 347 yards that way. Uh, so, you know, I'll have to work on adding a little bit of speed and momentum. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate all the support you've given me through this process. I hope this helps to show you where I'm headed and the progress that I've made. Be on the lookout for the next driver video. And if you haven't been watching, I'm doing Thank You Thursdays. Every Thursday at two, I release a short little video thanking different channels or different people uh, for the inspiration and the help that they've given me. Also down below in the description section, the Amazon link to support the channel, the 24 seven golf link to save you some money, the Bionic Gloves link to save you some money. And hopefully I'll have some more coming this year to where I can try and pass some savings along to you guys. So give this video a thumbs up, like, leave me some comments, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Did I forget anything? I don't know. I feel like I forgot something.